John goes 20 and I go 2. That's normally the way that we do this. It works pretty well, especially for people who don't take care that much for listening to me speak. But um, I was a little bit concerned about coming back here and speaking in Carthage because it's been 13 years since I was doing the job that John's doing now. And uh, I expressed that uh, view on Facebook and somebody tells me, uh, uh, oh, don't worry about it. Carthage is a very forgiving town. I, I, don't, I don't know how exactly to take that. But I'll tell you that, that things are a lot different. It's probably been about 15 years since I've been to, uh, uh, been to the country club here and seen Rotary Club. And I guess things have changed because I don't hear anybody talking about Myers Airport anymore. Is that, that, I'm sorry. I shouldn't, I shouldn't bring that back up. I'm sorry. But uh, uh, my part of the family, while John was out rescuing people and helping with that and, and working, um, I was, uh, you know, covered up in my apartment waiting for the tornado to hit me. I was about, uh, I heard the KZRG people say that the uh, uh, tornado had hit, that was a touchdown at 7th and Range Line, which I believe later turned out as totally erroneous, but uh, that was heading my way, and so I was taking cover. And in fact, I did not get out of my apartment for two days after that because I knew I wouldn't be any help to anybody and they said to keep off the street, that's what I did. And finally, the only reason I got out, I had a reporter from Newsweek magazine who wanted me to take her on a tour of some of the place. They had read some stuff that I had written on my blog and wanted me to take them out to East Middle School where I teach and which was hit by the tornado and, and destroyed. And I, I agreed to take her out there and we went to Duquesne and because Duquesne gets left out a lot when people are talking about what happened with the Joplin tornado, but that town was completely devastated by it. We went to Duquesne. Uh, we ended up having to park quite a ways away and walk. And we went, when we went around the roundabout, we came to uh, the first house on the right-hand side of the road. And there was uh, a family, uh, a husband, a wife, and two kids who were looking through uh, what was left of their house and trying to find keepsakes. And, and they had just found a picture of the wife's sister who had died a few months before, and was the picture was totally irreplaceable. And then while we were there, all of a sudden there was this little sound. Meow. And that cat had not been seen for two days either. And it was a totally happy moment. But as I found out so often while uh, doing the research for this book, Every happy moment is followed by something that was tragic because a few seconds later, uh, the little girl said, uh, where's our other cat? I don't know if they ever found the other one or not. Uh, we went to my school, checked it out, and then uh, the reporter wanted to see uh, the apartments behind the 15th Street Walmart. We went there, and I knew that one of the students that I teach at East, I had read on Facebook that... He had not been located. They did not know, you know, they didn't know if anything was wrong or not. They just didn't, the teachers were trying to find all the students, and he was one who had not been located. So I thought, well, I'll kill two birds with one stone. I'll take her around, and I'll, I'll ask people if, if they've seen him. And I started asking, and you know how it is in apartment complexes. People did not know, they don't know who each other are a lot of times. They didn't know the kid. They apologized to him and said they didn't know. And finally, I come to this ground-level apartment where an older man and his daughter are taking items out of the apartment. And uh, I asked him about my, my student, and he said that he didn't know him, but that the apartment manager had said that they had everybody accounted for. And so I was feeling real good about it. And then, just out of nowhere, he says, but my son was killed in the tornado. And his son turned out to be Chris Lucas, the hero at Pizza Hut, who rescued all those people. So that, that's the kind of thing. John was talking a little while ago how people said it was hard sometimes to get through, especially if you went through it, a few chapters of our book. And that's why with the new, the new book, which right now we have a, a working title of Reborn One Year After the Joplin Tornado, uh, it has a lot more positive tone to it because the things that have been happening in the city of Joplin for the past year have been totally remarkable. And we saw that on Tuesday night. Who would have ever thought in this day and age when people vote no on everything that smacks of taxes that you could get a supermajority for a bond issue to build 
voting for $62 million, and somehow we got it. Who would have thought that you would have uh, David Cook from American Idol coming to the high school homecoming? And we got it. By the way, we have a story in our book from uh, a young lady who was featured in the first book. She, uh, her family came here from Pakistan, and not just uh, she and her mother and father, but also all their aunts and their uncles. And they came here, and they lost all of their houses in the tornado, the whole family. Well, she's writing a story this time, and she not only is still here in Joplin and doing well, but she jumped up on that stage and high-fived David Cook and nearly got thrown out of the place. But uh, it was an exciting moment for her, and we will have that in this book. So there are a few more lighter moments. And just like in the first book where we printed the obituaries of all of the victims, there have been a couple that were added to the list since then. We will have those, and we, will have, we won't have the obituaries this time for, of all of the others, but their names will very definitely be included in the book. Uh, you know, it would be John whose phone would go off, wouldn't you? Yeah. Now, <laughs> but the, uh, the book will also include, and you know, we had a big change come up in the book. We were planning on having this second book out right before the one-year anniversary. But then things changed. We heard that President Obama was going to come here and speak at the Joplin High School graduation. Now, we know that there are a lot of people in this area who are not necessarily, this may come as a surprise to you, but not necessarily big fans of President Obama. But we also knew, hey, this is major. And we wanted this in the book. And I'll tell you how I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to be writing the story on that. <coughs> And John's going to be getting the, getting the pictures because I'm claustrophobic and there's no way I'm going near Missouri Southern with the president and all that security and that. But the way I'm doing this, the president's going to be kind of a minor character. He's going to, and some of you already think he is, but that's beside the point. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to have the, pre the president's speech is going to be, we'll have it word for word in our book because we think it's one of the important documents that needs to be included in it. But I'm going to tell the story of the president's visit uh, from, through the eyes of somebody who went through the tornado, a graduating senior who went to, who was one of my students at East Middle, or excuse me, that was when I was still teaching at South Middle School a few years back, who lost her home in the tornado, and I'm going to tell her story going from the iconic Hope High School to that high school graduation and opening the door to her future and it's kind of neat that you can open the door to your future and there's the president holding it for you. So, you know, that's, that's the kind of thing. Uh, plus, like John said, the extreme uh, makeover. Uh, we'll have that. We'll have the Habitat for Humanity. We will have follow-up stories from some of the people who wrote in this one. John mentioned the one who wrote the 168 word. He is back in this one. And yes, he will have the shortest story in this one, too. 142 words. I think he thought he got a little bit wordy last time. 142 words. And the nice thing about it, it is a very positive story. Because in, in the story in the first book, he talks about how he, he's really tired of living in the city after this. Well, because of that, he is now living out in the country. And I just got an invitation to his wedding. So that stuff is all in there. We're hoping we, by that time we might have a picture of the wedding included in the book too. So uh, there will be tornado stories. We had so many of them that were sent to us after the book came out, the deadline for it. There are some really good ones. We have them. We're fortunate enough to have an introduction to the book, which is also extremely powerful, written by Joplin's fire chief, Mitch Randalls, who is uh, featured in one of the stories in the first book. Uh, we're just pretty excited about this book. Uh, we keep on adding things because uh, Jeff Wells, that... Uh, John was talking about, he has written a story for this book about some of the, th the things that John was talking about a few moments ago. We will also have uh, the text of some of the most important speeches that were given during this time. One of them, and I was uh, privileged to be able to see this one in person, uh, is when our superintendent, C.J. Huff, spoke to the teachers when they came back uh, that first day uh, 85 days after the tornado and two days before the students arrived, we've got the text of that speech and we have the text of the speech that Jay Nixon made the same day. And just to show you I'm fair, you know, having these uh, 
Obama and Jay Nixon speeches, we will also have the text of the speech Rush Limbaugh made on July 4th. For those of you who really want to read that, sorry, I'll let my feelings slip through there a little bit. But uh, yeah, we're excited about this book, and I think I've probably carried on just a little bit too much. But it is extremely good to be uh, back in Carthage and to see a lot of, uh, a lot of old friends. And uh, thank you for having us here. Appreciate it.